Nice. And uh, tonight, I'd like to uh, give you some updates uh, on my uh, extended range electric motorcycle uh, battery extender project that I'm doing. So a few of you already know from the different uh, media, like on Facebook and other media, that I've talked about a project, which is uh, making a trip uh, very soon. Uh, to Radisson. Radisson is a city that is very far uh, north in uh, Quebec and it's from here in Quebec City a trip of about 1800 kilometers and to do that I need more range because there's one of the stretch uh, to get to Radisson uh, which is 381 kilometer long which means I don't have enough range and it's been many years that I've dreamed about modifying my zero to extend the range, just like I did back in uh, 2014 with my 2012 zero, where I went from 160 kilometer real world range to 245 kilometer real world range. Right now, my zero, which is a 2017 SR, is having um, 200 to 230 kilometer range stock with the extended uh, power tank battery and the monolith battery, the main battery. And now I'm doing the exact same project uh, as in 2014. So I'm installing side cases which are made inside with batteries. And the project is way more complicated than what it has been in 2014 because it involves uh, a split battery pack, which means I got, I will show you, these modules here. So these modules are 7.5 kilowatt hour each and they weigh about 75 pounds, which is awesome. Very nice energy density. These are coming from a recent zero motorcycle that had a lot of problems and I got the battery uh, at a great price. So I have two of these modules. Like you've seen in my previous video, the change in the most recent Zero motorcycle is that the battery is made of two modules that split the total voltage, which means this module is 51 volt and there's another module on the side, which is also 51 volt for a level of 102 volt. Right now, I cannot put one full block of two battery like that on the motorcycle. It will be very difficult. So what I'm doing is I'm doing cases like you see i found these really nice cases like the the storm oil pelican case uh those are not any of these brands these are uh, from italy but i'm not sure exactly what the brand but these fit nicely these batteries except that i had to cut the power lead here <laughs> on both sides and to crunch these a little bit and to install wires so uh, that's uh, that's the goal to make them to fit inside. That was the only thing, except that the fix for the battery, the, uh, these uh, mount, uh, these are M6 screw here. And what you see is that I had to heat those cases in order to make some room for these uh, kind of a bump here. OK, so right now what you see here, <laughs> it's a lot of work. So that case here is a 7.5 kilowatt hour with the BMS, and this is what I call the master. What I mean is that since the battery is split in two, and I will have one on each side of the motorcycle, and I don't want to have two 51 volt BMS, which means one per case, because if one of these is shutting down, the open circuit voltage it will see will be the entire voltage of the pack which is not good and i will blow the mosfet so i needed to choose a single bms which means that there's the channel a for half of the battery here which will be connected to this one so i made uh, quick boards to communicate with the uh, each of the node of the connection of the 14 connections of the cells in series and i have this uh little connector here so this is a 14S connector here, what you see. And it will connect to this uh, cable here that I made. 
So yeah, so what you see here is the uh, first channel, which is the zero to 51 volt. And then the 51 to 102 volt here, the second 14S of this 28S BMS will connect with this cable here. I will just need to make the connection with this GST connector and to solder these wires here that going here to the link between the two batteries. I mean, not the power link, but the serial link to link to the cells channel and it will connect directly here to this other battery will where I will connect this second cable here with all the cells channel to this one here and those are all waterproof. So the two lead that you see here will be the plus and minus. It will be the 51 volt link and the second one will be also the 51. So I will use this SB connector here which will connect to these leads and I will have a kind of a splitter which which means I will have those connectors split in two in series to make the 102 volt from the two batteries. And I understand guys, I will have for sure to manage uh, the connections because it will be important to have the negative of the battery and the link in series connected in the right sequence compared to the uh, BMS uh, connections here. And by the way, I also have the uh, temperature sensing on this one as well as on this one. I have four channels to monitor the temperature on this BMS. And this BMS, what is nice is that it's uh, a Gbyda BMS that I like a lot, but it's likely rebranded by this strange brand here. And those are difficult to find, but still exist. It's 100 amp continuous BMS. And let me, let me, let me explain. So the motorcycle uh, average power will be, I will say uh, maybe four kilowatts. So if I have four kilowatts uh, split in my actual battery in the zero in, and these two battery, in fact, if each of these battery, I will say 50, 50 share the current, uh, I will have half of the current, which means two kilowatt per battery set. Per battery set, I mean the original battery on the zero and these battery. Chances are that these battery, which is 15 kilowatt hour, because I have two 7.5 that will add to my actual 12 to 13 kilowatt hour usable on the actual zero. Um, it will be important to have the impedance match. What I mean is that I want that per kilowatt hour I will drain the same current on my actual zero than on these battery because I want these to drain at the same rate as the SOC goes down. I want to have both of my zero and these at the same voltage, which means it's very important to have the internal resistance and the cable resistance to be matching. So if I drain four kilowatt, let's say that I have like two sets of 12 kilowatt battery for a 24 kilowatt hour total i will need to drain two kilowatt per set right now i have 12 plus 15 which means 27 kilowatt hour of battery on the zero and a lot of you guys will wonder what kind of weight it represents well those two cases that you see here will weight once these are assembled like this one these will weight 80 pounds, okay? Maybe plus two pounds for the cables. So 80 pounds, which means 160 pounds of battery. If I'm adding the rack that uh, I will, the, the mount I mean, where I will have some steel and aluminum, uh, it will be maybe add 10 pounds, which means 170 pounds. If you take a passenger with the helmet, the, 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 the suit and everything, it corresponds to about the same. So yeah, so in summary, uh, I have a 100 amp BMS that represent at 102 volt about 10 kilowatt. And uh, it should be okay, I think. Otherwise it will maybe cut uh, at a twice of the current value, which means 200 amp here and 200 amp on the stock zero battery, which means 400 amp. But I just need to be easy on the acceleration or just set it to eco mode. So in other words, guys, um, that battery project is a project in order to 
be able to achieve the 381 kilometer range uh, stretch between Metagami and kilometer 381, which is the relay uh, 381, which is a kind of a truck stop in the uh, middle of the 621 kilometer to the north road from Metagami. So from Metagami to Radisson, it's 621 kilometer. And when I reach Radisson, it's at the 53th parallel. So that's quite in the north of Quebec. And a lot of people tell me there's nothing interesting there, except maybe forest, mosquitoes, you know, and, but there's very big hydro plan. And I'm very big fan of the nature and, you know, quiet nature and hydroelectric too. So that will be awesome trip. In principle, I will be able to finish that this week. There's a lot of work. And I've been working a lot already to set up everything. And what I mean by setting up everything, nothing has been done to uh, match perfectly uh, everything because everything is not made to fit. So what you see here is that there was some mount on this battery, but to make it to fit in, in the case, I had to cut these. The extension here, the connector, I will show you with the parts that I have here, I will show you the original connections. So yeah, so these are the original connection that were like installed here, where there's kind of a screw connector here. But I had to shave these, cut these, cut the bus bar, and to solder these eight gauge wire to these bus bar and to seal these, because this case is pressure equalized, so it means with the temperature changes and altitude, it will not breathe. Uh, I mean, breathe. So, air will not travel between inside and outside of the pack, and that's what I want. I don't want to have a vacuum created by differential of pressure and having water going inside. But even if there's water going inside, the entire BMS, including the PCB has been uh, covered with uh, conformal coating, which is uh, perfect for that uh, insulation. So that's the kind of uh, stuff that is looking like. Yeah, so you see, yeah, exactly this kind of stuff here. So it's exactly made for the conformal, uh, not the conformal coating, but for the um, sealing of the electronic. And uh, I've paid attention to have kind of a fiberglass tape here that I'm covering uh, the parts between this semiconductive part, which is aluminum, anodized aluminum, and these connections here. I have good spacing below it. And uh, in other words, I pay attention a lot to the uh, waterproofing of that. And I might install a drain hole on one of the uh, corner here because the way the battery or the, the cases will be mounted on the motorcycle, they will be likely tilted this way a little bit. And there will be like a corner that is lower than the other. So if I make a drain hole and that this corner is facing the rear of the motorcycle where there's a kind of a vacuum, I will expect that any kind of water intrusion will just be sucked out like this way. So yeah, uh, that's the update from now. Uh, if you have some question, uh, please ask in the comment. Uh, I will be uh, very uh, pleased to uh, answer all these because I know that you probably have a lot of questions about that kind of project. It will be maybe not the first, but uh, on the top two of the uh, electric motorcycle with the most range, the wheel roll range. Because if I take this ZF 17.7.3, uh, like, like Zero called these, so two of these batteries are the new Zero SRF and SRS. And these are called ZF 17.3, which means apparently 7.3 kWh. And I combine that to my ZF 13 plus 3.3, which is the power tank, which is 7 uh, ZF 16.3. So ZF 16.3 plus ZF 17.3, which means ZF 33.6. And if I combine both ranges of my zero to these modules of battery that I'm adding that are also coming from zero, it should in theory get about five to 600 kilometer range maximum, but I will not expect that. 
my goal is to have just enough to cover the 381 kilometer and then i will be able to charge at the uh, truck stop uh, relay uh, station and then continue to uh, radisson so if you have any questions guys uh, please ask and by the way i just posted on uh, electric motorcycle uh, owners group on facebook and uh i will just update the information too on uh on this site with uh i and i by the way i picked uh, i uh, posted a lot of pictures of the inside of all the modification and i will update that uh, soon so stay tuned and uh if you are not subscribed subscribed yet uh please do it it's uh helping me for uh, the youtube channel so take care bye bye that like close that All right, okay, so maybe I just click here.